So the first thing we need to talk about with significant digits is why do we care? It's really important that when we do measurements, we need to understand the tools we have have limitations. Whereas when we put numbers into our calculator, they have no limitations. So our calculator may give us multiple numbers, but that's not based on reality. So when we look at it right here, we have an example of a stuffed bear and a ruler. Okay, This ruler has a measurement, and it's based on how precise the ruler is that we're given. So for example, I'm going to take a look at this right here, and I am going to say that this is 0 0.5. Okay. Now then we want to measure to the end of the bear. And when we do that, we will see the bear comes up to over about here. Okay. And we're going to say that's going to be 8. 8.5. But the reality is our numbers can get a little bit more precise than that because we can always estimate our last numbers. So if we look down here, we can see that there's the 0.5, but we can estimate a second number. So I'm going to say the last number that I estimate is going to say 8.53. Okay. Whereas over here, we can see it's a little bit over the 0.5 line, so I'm just going to say it's 0 0.51. So therefore, when I do the math, it's really 8.53 subtract. 0.51, which means our final answer will end up being 8.02. Our last digit in this case eight of 8.02, our last digit is always going to be an estimation. That's okay. Okay. When we're looking at a liquid level, you'll see that in a lot of cases that liquids, especially water, tends to curve upwards. It's the meniscus. So what's important is that you're reading along the line here. This is the correct line, so you need to be looking at the bottom of the curve in a flat way. So we can see, based on these measurements here, that 23.5 is a fair measurement, based on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we can see it's in the middle there, so we can estimate our last digit. So our real measurement in this case is going to be 23.55. It's okay if the last number is estimated based on our best judgment. Our last example right here, we can see that sinking slightly below this line right here. So therefore, it is going to be 67 point, we see it's a little below that, so we're going to say it's going to be 66.9. We also need to talk about the differences between accuracy and precision. So with accuracy, it refers to how closely a measured value agrees with the correct value. So if we do a test to measure something, we know what the value should be, and then there's what we get. And how close what we get is to the reality is accuracy. Precision is if we do multiple measurements, how close is one measurement from the next one? So a good way to visualize this with this diagram we've got right here. In this diagram right here, in the top left-hand corner, we have four shots into a target. There's no pattern between these. They're not close to each other. They're all trying to hit the bullseye. So this one overall is not considered accurate or precise. Now, if we were to look at this one individual shot, which I will circle right here, if we were to look at this, we could look at that and say, hey, this particular shot is accurate. But if we look at them overall, it's not considered your accurate shots. On the other hand, if we look at this one right here, if we were to draw what the center circle is, the center circle would be about there. You can think of this as sort of being the middle point between all four of these shots. In this case, it almost hit the bullseye. So although the four shots are all over the place, that makes it not very precise, but it is very accurate. If you look at these drawings down here, we can see all four shots here are consistently off the target. Because they're consistently off the target, it's not accurate, but because it's reproducible, it's considered precise. In this case where it's hitting the bullseye all four times, it's considered both accurate and precise.